Welcome back to another video, and this one is on my attempt to make missiles. Which didn't go out, didn't go as well as it goes, but I mean, eh, whatever. Um, so I made a past video about making the best seeker head that I reasonably could. It had its problems, but overall it was pretty effective under the specific conditions I was testing. And this video is about trying to turn that seeker concept, you know, the actual part of the nose that detects targets, onto an actual missile and see how well it performs in actual combat and more rigorous testing. This is more of a follow-up video, but the past video is not going to be required because I'm going to be explaining all the components of the missile anyway right now. So as you can see from this missile setup, it has the usual four sensors, one up, one down, one left, one right. Now, this missile does two things differently from just having that. One, it spins. This means that instead of just seeing up, down, left, right, it also sees all the in-between angles in between those. This means that by sweeping through it, it has a much more complete picture and the chances of something slipping through are a lot less. The spinning and the spinner rate still need, really need to be tuned, but like, you know, it, it works. Honestly, I think just turning it up to 10 might be the smartest option, but then there's other delay issues, which I'm not going to get into. And basically, what this does is it allows it to sweep through more angles. And the second way I get it to see more with less sensors is by having the sensors themselves shrink and increase in their FOV. I have them zero in on a target, and then if the target gets bigger, or moves to the side, or something else like that, or if the target's really big, the sensors will expand to match the outline of the thing that it's looking at. If the thing that it's looking at is instead something really, really small, in theory at least, it shrinks back down. Now, the biggest problem with uh, these types of missiles is the fact that they can't actually sense much. They can't sense much to the side and they can only sense a very small section of space. And the amount of effort required to give it both a search pattern and a track pattern, instead of just having one do both duties, is incredibly hard. So having one set of sweeping do both the tracking and the spotting of the target is where most of the difficulty in making effective sensor missiles comes in. You simply cannot cover enough space to do effective spotting with a missile. Anyway, so this specific missile design, which I am going to upload for your own usage and whatever, as you could see, these are the sensors on the nose. Um, something to note is that they are all positive inputs and they all feed into the hinges that they're set up on. Again, this is to shrink and expand depending on the target size that it's tracking so that it's always tracking as best as that it can. Uh, because of this, I have to put a couple of extra logic gates to flip the outputs before feeding them into the gyros. Now, the thing is, this one frame delay does cause problems on the, like, super high spin, but generally it's not that much of a factor. So, if you, in case you want to tune the way that that works, the settings are there, the gyro for the rotation sorry, not rotation, for the pitching and yawing, they're there. This is the spin gyro, makes it spin, exactly what it sounds like. Um, then there's also the magnet, and then there's the bomb. The bomb has a slight delay on it because, you know, it's fused. It has a fuse on it because it didn't put a proximity fuse. The proximity fuse, although they're better, they are more annoying to make and take up more space and volume. So instead, what I have is a magnet, which helps with the, during those last moments before collision. And then the bomb is simply on a fuse. So if, even if the bomb doesn't go off from the impact, the magnet should at least hold it in there until the fuse can go off. And this is the um, lodge gate, which kicks off the entire thing, which then also feeds into the thrusters and other such things. And you'll notice that the spin has a slight delay on it. This is so that it doesn't start spinning before the things detach. And to make it launch faster towards the target and skip the entire startup sequence time, it's an on a piston launch thing. 
because of the delays of, so every logic operation takes a single frame to compute. What this means is that normally when you do piston stuff, you have to delay it by 0 0.2, 0 0.3, sorry, 0 0.02 or 0 0.03 seconds. This is roughly one frame. But because there's already a single frame of delay because the uh, detaching blocks are operated by the missile side of things, and that means I first have to power the missile and then the missile powers the detaching blocks, that causes an extra delay, which means ironically, I don't actually need to put any delays into the um, detaching blocks for it to have the proper piston launch effect. So, now that, oh wait, and one more thing, uh, the thing to modify the FOV of it, that is this sensor right here. If you make it smaller, it makes the search FOV larger. If you make it the number in there bigger, like 0 0.15, it'll make the FOV narrow down. Now here's the thing, if you want to tune it yourself, I'm just going to quickly go through the procedures. Yes, the version I'm putting on the workshop is tuned to my preferences for my testing. If you want to use it in combat, the things that you will need to have for it will be very, very different. So to start with, the FOV is by far the biggest thing for getting effective kills with this missile. Because if you have a very small FOV, it will pretty much only look straight ahead. So if you want to track something that's moving in a straight line and you're behind it, or if you just want to hit something that is that has a whole bunch of other stuff to its sides, but you don't want to hit that stuff, and you're already pretty accurate with it, just shrink down the FOV by setting it to like 0 0.15, and then that'll make it zoom pretty straight directly into the target. Or, if you instead want to use this missile like an actual missile, and want it to actually guide itself into the target, I personally recommend turning it down to like 0 0.05. Because otherwise, it, it doesn't search wide enough. That's the problem. It could search, like, again, like at most like 20, 30 meters to each side. So, like, the bubble in which it can see targets is pretty small, which is why you need to put a lot of effort into expanding out to the side. The problem with this is obviously it doesn't have as much precision when scanning so far out to the sides. But that is by far the most important thing. Uh, for the turning gyros, I personally recommend having them set to 5. If you want it to look like a more realistic missile that actually abides by the laws of physics, turn it down to 3. Um, if you want it to actually be able to track very small targets, very quick targets, and stuff that like it might only see for a single frame on the side of its uh, sensors, turn it up to like 8, maybe even 10 if you're feeling lucky. The problem is such high uh, sensor stuff is that it sometimes goes too much to a side and flicks itself out, but that rarely happens. So just go wild, I guess. Okay. I've explained all that. I've explained all the systems. If you download the thing, it'll work. It'll work as expected, as promised, which is to say it'll work very poorly. As you can see in the background footage right now, I have a whole bunch of testing setups. I tested against stationary targets on the water of varying sizes. I tested against um, just stationary targets on land that have a pretty small cross section. And I tested against makeshift helicopters. And overall, it's pretty bad. Now, the biggest question of why this version, which actually is an improvement from the previous video, why is this version worse? Comes down to a pretty simple thing that I actually already covered in my previous video. In my previous video, I said that the metric you use for accuracy is very, very important. The reason why I said that is because in that video, I had a system which only allowed me to release the missile after it already achieved the lock. I don't have this on this version specifically because now that it's a missile, it can actually cruise under its own power. There are times when it is beneficial to fire it without having a lock and hope that it gets a lock later along its flight. That simply wasn't a concern with the earlier version. So the result of this is I can now fire shots 
which will miss, where before it literally stopped me from firing shots, which I will miss. And that's a thing that you want with missiles. You want to be able to fire them early so that they run into the target in advance. You want to be able to fire the missiles from a far distance. 50 meters is really, really close. Whether you're doing like bombing, like, I don't know, a battleship or whatever, being within 50 meters of it is basically a death sentence. You want to have range on it, which is why having using more sensors to detect whether or not it spotted a target was out of the question. This is by far the biggest thing which is stopping it from having a high accuracy. And also because of this, naturally you have to set the FOV to be much larger to scan much more area. The result of this is that it doesn't actually get as much use out of the sensors being able to expand and contract because it no longer can even spot small targets. So that is by far the biggest downside with this system. It is good and when it does get close, it does generally hit. As you can see from this testing, yes, it fails, but by like compared to other missiles, it's not bad. It flies straight, it flies even, and it flies very consistently. It flies at a good speed, and when it does get close to a target, it guarantees a hit, as opposed to other missiles which might have like a near miss or something. This All this missile does is basically turn all those near misses into hits, which it's not a lot, but it is still useful. So yeah, that is overall what happened with this missile. And yeah, so overall, I think the only reasonable way which I can actually make sensor missiles viable is if I had a separate set, set of sensors with a much more advanced and better or more efficient in some way search pattern to spot the targets first in advance before then using the actual main seeker head which I have developed for this missile to actually guide it in for the last moments. Because frankly the biggest problem right now is one, it can't detect small targets at the edge of its range or really detect anything at the ed edge of its range, and two, the edge of its range is also really, really close. So I need to not only increase the range of the sensors somehow, even though the old way to get glitched 300 meter sensors is now gone and they don't work anymore. So I need a way to increase sensor length, which is basically impossible. And then I need to find a way to use that sen those sensors like 10 times more efficiently to spot targets. Those are the only two ways I can get this thing to be reasonably effective. For now, however, as you can see through all this testing, it doesn't do amazing, but compared to some other missiles I know, it doesn't actually do terribly. It flies straight and hits hard, and frankly, that's all I wanted it to do. Now, before I leave this video, I want to ask you for your suggestions for more videos, because by God, I am running out of ideas. Please send help. 